Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth reason of why people won't accept the gospel. And I might look a little bit tired and um, that's because I am very tired. Uh, we have had a, a busy week again, uh, a lot of people coming to the door with uh, malaria, uh, especially a lot of uh, young children uh, and in some cases even that you might think, oh, this is really troublesome. So, yeah, I'm actually quite pooped. I love that word, pooped. I don't know why I like it, but it's just the way the, the, the word sounds. Anyway, the fifth reason of why people won't accept the gospel. Um, they don't feel their need of Christ. They don't feel their need of Christ. Boston said, Revelation 3, verse 17. Uh, a little side note, Boston actually did not quote the whole verse, but I will do that just for clarity purposes only. Revelation 3, verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest, knoweth not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. They need his blood and spirit, but they are not duly sensible of their need. Their own works are big in their own eyes and appear to them sufficient in order to obtain God's favor. Their natural and acquired abilities are also with them sufficient in order to their sanctification. They are by no means shaken out of themselves. Therefore, the offer of the gospel is but an offer of food for the, to the full soul and so is loathed. You see, this reason leans closely to the reason of the second video. No true sight and sense of their own sinfulness. You'll find the link of that video in the description of this video. You see, people might say they understand that Jesus can help them in many ways. Oh yes, they might even admit that he is the way for their sins to be forgiven. Jesus appears to them to be uh, a handy tool to get through life without too much trouble. And you could say that this problem emerges because of faulty preaching. And obviously the so-called prosperity preaching can cause this idea. Preachers who say that life will become better in every way when you accept Jesus. Well, tell that to poor people and they will love that preacher. But I'm not even thinking about this heresy of prosperity preaching. Because that's what it is. It is a heresy. No, I'm more thinking about the incomplete preaching of the gospel. You see, throughout the ages, evangelists have tried to make the gospel as appealing as possible. In itself, that's not wrong. The gospel can easily be explained in different settings. In Europe, for example, it might be more applicable to emphasize the fact that Jesus took the punishment for our sin. In theology, this approach is called the penal substitution theory and it is the most used image of the gospel in Europe. However, here in Madagascar one might use a different image of the gospel. Here in the countryside people are extremely afraid of the spirits. And it reasonable to preach besides the other work of Jesus that he actually overcame the spiritual world. Jesus is the ultimate winner. He conquered the grave and he is victorious over all spirits. This image of the gospel is called the Christus Victor theory. I have placed two links with explanations about these theories in the description below. Uh, mind you, however, these are just some notes a friend of mine took many years ago during our lectures. So they are not an extended explanation, but just a brief overview. Personally, I do use this image of the victorious Christ quite often. I visit witch doctors and walk through the forest after dark. And just these two things uh, people are very much afraid of. I mean, the witch doctors are known for their ability of poisoning people and cast curses. Uh, and the forest? Well, the forest is just teeming with bad spirits, especially after dark. And when I tell people that I'm not afraid because Jesus is the Most High and that all demons will have to leave when he tells them to, I right away, right away get their attention. 
This doesn't mean, of course, that I can skip all the other wonderful aspects, aspects of Jesus' work on the cross. His work is way more than what we in theology try to capture in one image. But I am afraid that even though most evangelists are very diligent, they can be too careful in what they preach. And you might have found out by now that most evangelists, no, I should say all evangelists, um, but also preachers and missionaries, are all human, just like you and I. They also, just like you and I, want to be liked by other people, and sometimes they will just adjust their preaching a little to achieve that. Some tend to leave out the nasty parts of the gospel, you know, the, the parts that narrate about eternal hell, the parts that say that if you're not in Christ, um, if you're not for Christ, I mean, you are against him. The part that say, says that people are already lost and will spend their lives and afterlives living in separation from the Almighty when they don't accept his solution to salvation. You know, that part that says that they will have to share eternity in the same place as Satan and all the demons. When an unbeliever hears an incomplete gospel, he or she might not feel the horrible realization that if Jesus does not do uh, all the important saving work, he or she is going to an eternal hell of fire. The unbeliever does not feel that he or she is bound as a slave in which his sins have changed uh, chained, not changed, uh, in which his sins have chained him, I wanted to say. So, this is going to be a little bit uh, a short video, but and normally I end with um, an encouragement to unbelievers to put their trust in Jesus. This time, however, I would like to end the video by encouraging all Christians who are watching. I'm fully aware of the challenges we face when we want to be radical. Um, when you go to your daily job, it might be very difficult to be bold and to stand for the whole gospel. You see, it's so much easier to cherry pick. Trust me, I know. However, the Lord has set you apart to do his work. You are a follower of the Most High, and when the Lord is for you, who can be against you? Let us start praying for each other. Try to find a brother or a sister who wants to lift you up in prayer. Let's ask the Lord to strengthen us through his spirit, so that we will be bold and preach the gospel in its totality. Let us conclude this video with 1 Timothy 1 verse 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. You can give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also subscribe to my channel or even better, follow me on Odyssey. That way you will never miss a new video. You will find all the links in the description below.